this is Know Thyself. Uh, a little bit about where this is coming from. Uh, quite a few years ago now, I went through a serious rising for Iraqi or Save with uh, Diane Paxson and Lori Wood. And one of the things that they really stressed at the start of that intensive was you need to know who you are, all your good points, all your bad points, and you really need to know who you are so you don't lose yourself, don't harm yourself while you're doing this intense trance work. Uh, the more and more I've worked with this, the more I basically have come to the realization that understanding who you are and forming that relationship with yourself as if you're dating yourself, really is the most basic trance skill that we all should be doing, no matter what, and we almost never talk about. Uh, it's, you'll find it maybe gloss over in some books. Uh, I highly recommend uh, Diane Paxson's Transportation. Uh, she has a couple of very nice worksheets in it uh, uh, talking about uh, <laughs> well done. Any of social media invades. <laughs> uh, talking about uh, getting to know yourself uh, and questions and all to ask. I'm going to kind of be going through a little bit of that with this. Uh, but uh, this book by far has much more detailed uh, information. Uh, so my first question to all of you is, why do you think we need to know ourselves? to be able to find your way back. Finding your way back is an excellent reason. So you know what is you and what isn't you? Yes. You should identify your goals. Yeah. Well, if everything is about intention, you better really know what your motivations are. That's a good one, yeah. You had two of the three I was going to talk about. <laughs> uh, of course, this, like I said, this was this was part of my regular SAIDS intensive team, uh, class, uh, which will be going on at Wellspring this year. Uh, so this originally came, comes out of the regular end of things. And while we can't forget that Delphi had carved in stone over the cave, know thyself, <laughs> uh, as it was translated to English. Uh, so, the Delphic oracles felt that you need to know yourself also. Uh, what I want to talk about as far as uh, reasons why today are uh, you need to know what you look like so you can see what's changed over, the, over time, uh, which is one of the things you guys brought up. Uh, you need to know what uh, you look like so you, you can find yourself again if something uh, horribly wrong happens. And uh, you also need to know yourself so you know what you can, cannot, and should not do. Uh, so let's start with that last one first. Uh, knowing what you can do. Well, this is all about giving you confidence. Uh, this is how we learn. This is how we grow. We go look back at elementary school math. You learn in addition. Two plus four is six. Then probably the next thing we learn is subtraction. Six minus four is two. A year or two later, we then learn about negative numbers. And we learn that addition of a negative number is the same as subtraction. We're building upon our previous knowledge and going the next step forward. We do that all the time with pretty much everything we learn. So uh, with our trans work, we know we can do this. Well, I want to do that. That's very similar to this, but I just need to make a couple small tweaks. Maybe that will work. Knowing what you can do will build the confidence to go on to the next thing that you're trying to do. Uh, I can tell you that uh, in sciences, in computers, uh, pretty much everything, we use this process to build our own knowledge, to, to build up computer programs or molecules or whatever until we get what we're finally looking for in the end. Uh, what you can't do, 
Now, this is more about uh, self, well, more about preventing embarrassment and frustration. Uh, we all have things that we cannot do in life. They may be physical, they may be trans, they may be something else. Uh, when you're working by yourself, it's perfectly fine to be working with the things that you can't do to get past that blockage. But if you are writing a ritual and you know you can't do something, and you write that into the ritual, you're setting yourself up for failure. And that's not really a good thing to, for yourself to be doing. Uh, in the case of me, with when doing save, if I get a question along the lines of something that I know I cannot do, I'm going to tell them I can't do that. And I have to be strong enough to be able to admit to myself and admit in public that, no, I can't do that. Uh, and the one example I'll give for that is many years ago, as a baby pagan, uh, myself and someone else uh, uh, had a mutual friend that was causing troubles and uh, really bad mouthing and saying things about another friend of ours. And we confronted him. I followed Loki, he followed Set. Uh, the guy we confronted followed Heimdall. Uh, the best way to describe what, what was seen at the end was Heimdall was cowering in the corner. I have zero relationship with Heimdall since then, hmm. for very good reasons. Uh, I could go and try to work that out, uh, <clears throat> but that would probably mean taking back uh, what I did, and I still stand by what I did. I also paid the price for what I did. Uh, all kinds of magic along those lines, there's always a price. Uh, it's not necessarily a good one. Uh, but I know that Heimdall is not in the, uh, the group of gods that I can relate to, that I can call upon. Uh, on top of that, I follow Loki, and Heimdall and Loki don't get along together that well. <laughs> And then we have the stuff that you should not do. Uh, these are things that you know are going to cause you harm in one way or another. When we're talking about trance, we're talking more along the lines of emotional harm. So to give you kind of the background for one of my shouldn'ts, uh, I grew up in Northern Jersey. Growing up in Northern Jersey, you go into the city on a regular basis. Uh, you go on school trips a couple times a year, you go on family a couple times a year, anytime you have visitors, you go into the city. The city is just part of your life when you grow up in Northern Jersey. Uh, whenever we went in, we always went in through Hoboken, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, through uh, Lincoln Tunnel, uh, which is Weehawken. And as you're coming down the Lincoln Tunnel on the bus, you get the most beautiful view of lower Manhattan. <laughs> really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, that whole waterfront there, Hoboken, Weehawken, all gorgeous views of Lower Manhattan. Uh, driving down Route 17 in Ramsey on a clear day. There's this one crest of a hill where you can see the entire uh, Manhattan Island and the whole skyline. It's just absolutely gorgeous. So that's what I grew up with. And I knew this, know the city relatively well. Did all the touristy stuff back in the 80s. And every time I had friends coming in from out of town, do the story, touristy stuff still. 9-11 happened. Now, panic, of course, everyone was in panic. Uh, the people out in, say, Alaska and Hawaii who had no direct connection to New York City, they had this one level of panic all the way to the other, uh, the, other, the other end where we had people in the city that witnessed it or knew they had family and friends that were involved. That was panic on the other, complete other end of the scale. I have friends and families that live in, still live in the New York City area. At that time, I, wasn't, I didn't know that my stepfather had stopped going in on a periodic basis to the Trade Center, because uh, he went into the Trade Center for meetings with the Port Authority. Well, once I found out that, okay, everyone I know is fine, my panic subsided a little bit. Uh, but again, being from the area, you still have pretty high panic because you know the area. That night, uh, we went to the EMS squad, because uh, I was doing EMS at the time, uh, and pretty much realized we're going to be doing mutual aid for New York. Uh, and I volunteered. That following Friday, we got called in. 
you know, I go down there, spend 24 hour stint down there. First 12 hours staging Chelsea Pier, no big deal. Uh, didn't do anything. Then we got sent down to uh, Broadway and Maiden, uh, which is south of Canal Street. Canal Street was the basically the barrier where unless you had a purpose to be down there, you couldn't go down. That was our first sight. First time we got to see Ground Zero. But it really didn't hit us. We then found out that no, we weren't supposed to be here. We we're supposed to be down at Pier A. Uh, driving down Broadway, the dust, the street vendors just ran and their carts were still there, full of food. Uh, I have connection to Trinity Church because my grandmother had lunch there in the graveyard every day when she worked on Wall Street. A beautiful church, it's a historic church. But thankfully it was not harmed other than dust and a little bit of debris, but still. Go down to Bowling Green where the big bowl is. This is the busiest part in Manhattan. It was empty. There's supplies piled up, National Guard around, but that's about it. So we get to Pier A and we face this dichotomy. Pier A is the first pier on the Hudson north of Battery Park. Battery Park is one of the two places you go to get to Ellis Island and Statue of Liberty. To the south, we have Statue of Liberty in the harbor, looking out, welcoming everyone in. We have Navy ships in the harbor. We have helicopters in the air. And we have all the dust and debris to the north. Well, the last six hours we spent at Ground Zero. And I can tell you that was the most surreal experience I'll ever go, have ever gone through. There are a lot of things that I saw there that I never want to see ever again. Things I don't want to ever bring up again. And yet, there are so many memories of that day, like driving down Canal, uh, West Side Highway to get below Canal Street, where New York came together as an amazing people. And you don't drive to New York with your doors unlocked. You don't drive to New York with your windows down. They were throwing <laughs> stuff into the ambulance. The city really came together in such a beautiful way. I wish we could keep that without having to go through anything else. Unfortunately, time goes on. New Yorkers become New Yorkers again. <laughs> but I know that things dealing with that, especially for anyone, I, I can see your emotions. Uh, <laughs> I was there. <laughs> yeah. I had a phone call, and we didn't know what was going on. And so it goes, are you all right? Of course we're all right. Why? So we didn't know where Albany was, apparently. Like, yeah. we're three hours north. Yeah, yeah, because New York State's only in the city. That's what they think. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, um, downtown Albany was evacuated. Yeah. And the Corning Tower was a real concern. Yeah, because you know, at least one of the planes flew over, over Albany. Mm -hmm. They just followed us and right now. But there are, so there are many things connected to that day. Yeah, I know today, 9-11 comes up, I avoid the television, I avoid radio. I am not in a position where I can handle it yet. Uh, the State Museum, if you ever get a chance, has a, a wonderful exhibit on 9-11. I was fine until I turned the corner, and in the hall of fire trucks, they had an ambulance, which I know I walked by to get dinner. That's when I lost it. So knowing what you shouldn't do, because if I'm in deep trance and I don't have full control over myself, what's going to happen if I start bringing this stuff up? Uh, this is very important when we're talking about doing things like save, where I don't know what's going to be brought up. Uh, so right there, knowing what you can, can't, and shouldn't do probably is the best reason why you should get to know yourself. Now, going back, I think Skip, you said to find yourself. Yeah. Uh, every now and then, weird things happen and you get lost. 
uh, I was doing Zayd, and Hikate, it turned out, went right in the middle of a question, picked me up, dropped me off uh, on the Mediterranean, and rocky shore looking over the, over the Mediterranean. And I'm like, where the heck am I? How did I get here? <laughs> Followed my training, got answered the question, figured out, about, oh, okay, I'm in the Mediterranean, and that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> we have a relationship. Let's just put it that way. Because <laughs> uh, the last save, I, well, two saves ago that I did, she pimped out her oracular uh, ritual during my save. <laughs> uh, but I, I digress with that. Uh, I figured out where, about where in the world I was, I knew about where in the world I was supposed to be. I had no idea how I got there. So I'm not doing safe journeying anymore, because if you don't know how you got there, you don't know how you can get back, it's not really safe. You should not do that intentionally. <laughs> uh, to go back, try to find myself. OK, I, I find what I think of myself, but I need to confirm that it's me and not something else. And knowing who you are and what you look like uh, mm. physically, energetically, spiritually, and having a fresh version of that in your head is a really important part of knowing yourself. So if something like this does happen, and it doesn't happen often. I mean, I've, I've only had it happen once. Have you? No. No. It's been easy, the journeys that I've done, going right to the gates of hell. So. Yeah. Yeah, especially when you start dealing with the underworld, you start getting some interesting things happening, too. Uh, but knowing what you look like so you can find yourself again uh, is a really important part of this. Just in case it ever happens. And let's hope it doesn't. Which brings us to knowing yourself so you know what changes over time. Uh, and this is, as described by Laurie Wood, the checksum. Uh, for those of you that are not computer geeks, what a checksum is, is you basically run your file through a program that creates generally a 32 character hash of the file. Sometimes 64 characters now. MD5 is 24, uh, 32. Uh, and this is theoretically unique per file. So if you're going online and you're downloading a, a program, especially if you're downloading a bi binary from online, they should provide a checksum and you should be able to run the same hash algorithm on that file, and you can get the same number out. If you don't, something's changed. And you should not use that binary. Most of us, honestly, don't do that. <laughs> or don't know how to do that. Why well, we do it automatically. Yeah. Uh, but we can do a kind of a similar thing for ourselves, uh, where we basically take this picture of ourselves and we store it in our own internal memory, and then we go through and do something. We do our trance work. We do, uh, you know, do let's say we do this weekly, and we go back and do this again. And the idea is to check what has changed. Now, some things are going to change no matter what we do. Our blood will have circulated so many more times. Uh, you know, if we're doing this before trance and then after trance, we're probably going to be more tired. We're probably, we may have to go to the bathroom. Uh, we're going to be a little bit older. We can't control these things. But are we all here? Or did we leave something behind when we were out there journeying? Is there something new? If we lost something or we picked something up, the next question is, is it OK? Are we fine with that? If we're not, then we need to go through and fix it. And the sooner you realize that you have something to fix, the easier it will be to fix it. Now, this is not the safe journey workshop, but the two simplest ways of keeping yourself in one piece and not bring back anything else is if you journey in, follow the same path out. Generally speaking, if you drop something on the way in, your body will pick it up on the way out. Oops.
very often there's something attached to that. <laughs> unless you really are 100% positive of who or what it is and what their intentions are, and you are okay with that. Even then, I would strongly recommend not. Uh, I'm sure that will probably end up in uh, Skip's fairy talk slightly. No, not really. I'm just talking about the races themselves, not oh. journeying into them. That okay. would be another workshop in itself. Because <laughs> <laughs> the fae are very well known to do things like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, let's take a second, uh, and let's go through a check sum exercise. And this is a very, it's not really a trans exercise, uh, but in many respects it is. So, make yourself comfortable, close your eyes, and just take a deep breath in, and out, in, and out. Once more in and out, and we are going to look at ourselves. So let's start with our head and look at your head, see what it looks like. How does it feel? What does it, how does it hurt? Uh, does it, what does it look like energetically? What does it look like spiritually? And as you store that picture, go down, down your neck and into your chest. And how does that look? And how does that feel? Spiritually, energetically, physically. Then choose an arm and take a look at your arm. Again, we're going to ask ourselves, what does it look like? Spiritually physically, energetically. And we store this all in our minds. Then we look at our other arm, and we ask the same, physically, spiritually, energetically. Let's go down to our belly, and how does that feel? How does that look? And then down to one of our legs, and down all the way to our foot. And how do, how's that leg and foot look and feel? Physically, spiritually, energetically. Again, we look at the other leg. Again, ask the same questions of how does this look? If you want, you can take a quick look down your chakras and see how they're aligned and how they look and feel. If you look in your heart, look in your gut, wherever it feels appropriate, wherever your spiritual center is, look at that, see what it looks like, what does it feel like. And then just step out for a second and take a look at your entire body. Look at your auras. What do you look like from the outside? Again, we're talking physically, spiritually, energetically. And we're going to store all of what we've just seen in our mind. This will be our starting point for today. And as we go on, and we do trance, we do our daily works, if we come back and do the same exercise, we can compare it to what we just looked at. So store it deep, write it to the hard drive of the brain. When you're ready, make sure you're back in your body Deep breath in and out, in and out. Now, your next breath, bring yourself back and open your eyes when you're ready. Mm. 
So this is what you look like now. This is where you are currently. If you do this exercise again before you go to bed, you'll notice there are changes. Mostly daily life changes. Maybe something will happen at the ritual tonight and uh, you know, maybe there'll be more changes than that. Uh, the more you do this exercise, the quicker you can do it. Uh, this is something I strongly recommend you do before you do any kind of trance work. And again, once you're done your trance work. Especially if you're just been getting out. And especially if you're doing something really deep and uh, high trance. Like the safe work, like possession work. Uh, those really tax who you are, uh, especially possession work, because you are not yourself at that point. Uh, okay. So that's part of what we're doing. Now, the other part is we need to get to know ourselves. We get to know who we are. And I honestly do not remember the sci-fi reference. I don't remember what show it was on. Uh, it's Babylon 5 or Deep Space Nine or something like one of those, where uh, the captain of the ship or someone on the ship was asked, what is your name? And they were forced to give a different answer every single time until there was no other answer. Uh, and dug down to get to their true self. So names have power. We all know this. Uh, just like words have power. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on our names. Now, if you have paper, this works better. Uh, what I want you to do is, well, most of us have, at, well, we all have at least one name. Many of us have multiple names uh, that we go by at some point throughout our lives. So if you can, write down uh, what your main name is, what you go by the most. <coughs> and leave some space. And then write down all the other names that you go by. And leave a little, enough space for like a sentence or so. Uh, and what names you choose, that's up to you. If you don't have pen and paper, that's try to do this mentally. Uh, if someone needs a pen, I've got a couple extra. Okay, so with all of your secondary names, not the ones that you want to be known as. Uh, Think about what part of your life this name came from and just jot down a, a sentence or so about where that name came from. So for myself, some of my other names, uh, the one prob everyone probably knows is Ilias. That was my baby pagan name. Uh, of course, I have Robert, which is my formal name, my legal name, name that was called when I was in trouble. <laughs> we all have that name somewhere. Uh, Robbie. Basically, only, only my grandparents call me that. So it's a, pretty much a family name. Uh, and Lou, which is my high school nickname. So these are all different parts of my life. They really don't overlap that much. Obviously, my legal name overlaps a little bit. Uh, but they all describe different parts of my life, different parts of who I am. So take a moment and try to think about where all your other names besides your main one fit. And if you want to share, you're more than welcome to share, but I'm not going to require you to do so. Thank you. 
doing the exercise or doing work? I'm doing the exercise. Okay. He's writing a lot down. <laughs> but some of us have a lot of names. Some of us only have one or two names. Mm -hmm. And that's perfectly fine. Okay, now with your main name, the name that you go by the most, whether it's uh, the name you go by out in the, in the real world or the pagan world, I don't care. Uh, start listing all the various attributes of you that fall underneath that name. And there should, with your main name, there should be quite a few attributes. So, with me, I'm a chemist. I'm a web programmer. I'm a computer geek. I do home improvements, I knit, I spin, I brew. I'm essentially a DBA at times. Uh, I know my ropes and knots, which kind of goes in with the knitting and spinning. Uh, obviously, I'm a magician, a priest, a seer, a rune practitioner, dot, 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 dot. Uh, we all have a whole list of things that make up who we are underneath our own name. Try to try to list out some of those things. And you're not going to get them all today. This is an ongoing process that you're going to want to keep on <clears throat> getting to know yourself continuously. Now that you get that list, take a look at the list. Is there a common theme within that list? Do you see something within the list that ties it all together? For me, when I look at my list of things, it's all about seeing patterns. which very much explains why I like doing, doing the save and the seership and things like that, because that's all about patterns. You know, everyone else will have their own summary of what they are for, for that name. And if you, go through, excuse me, if you go through this for all your different names, you'll find that you have different functions for each name. So we're only going through your main name here, but this same exercise, you can go through for every other name you, you go by and kind of start seeing as a whole who you are overall. Now, in my case, most of these names, well, some of my other names have been left behind. They're who I was. It's interesting to see where I came from to where I am now. Uh, so knowing your past also is a great benefit to know who you are. Because we only build from our past. We don't build from our future. So does anyone wish to share anything on this? Like I said, you don't have to. I don't mind. I, You know, besides my names, I'm also mom, and I'm also grandma. So those are real important names to me. Mm -hmm. But the thing that goes through all of them. Like my me my legal name is Patricia, which nobody ever calls me. But when I have to go to work, I used to have to wear it on a right. name thing, which used to be kind of weird because <laughs> nobody ever called me that. But then people would, if I told them my name was Ninian, they'd be, what is that? <laughs> yeah. So, but the thing that goes through all my, because even when I'm mom and I'm grandma, I'm. Um, every my job, my career, being an herbalist, I'm a healer. So 
So mm -hmm. that's my been my main thing, no matter what, no yep. matter what my name is. I usually get orders and serves like with mom, Sheree, Sheree, and Judith when I was in deep shit. This was often because <laughs> my brother was with me. Um, Fiola, I got in high school because <laughs> I, I didn't behave in our class. We didn't just do pencil. I was always with different colored pencils, and the art teacher didn't like that. But. I can tell you one of my favorite names I was given, not one I used, but one I was given by a ranger up at the Adirondacks, uh, the camp I worked at, was, you little redheaded. <laughs> <laughs> it's only ever used once, but it's still one of my favorite names that was given to me. <laughs> and it, it, I, I liked that name for so, because I never had a nickname until high school. Mm -hmm. It's like, nobody could think of one. I have a pretty distinct split um, between everybody who knew me before I got my master's degree, would call me Gina, and everybody after that, as I go by Regina now, and so you can very easily tell when someone has met me. Um, <laughs> that does happen. Yeah, and also I have like, um, my name from Roller Derby was a very distinct part of my personality when I was playing. Um, but I guess like most of the qualities that I associate um, with things like a dancer and, and an artist and a creator and a reader and a librarian. So it's some kind of like creative, creative connection. Yeah. Okay. So this is just one exercise. Uh, when does this, this workshop end? Quarter after? Well, I think it's longer. Mm -hmm. 45 minutes. Or, or two. 2.15. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we got 45 minutes. We have time here. Yeah. All right, I'll talk about mine just real quick. Um, when I was a baby pagan, I tried on alternate names and nothing really seemed to work. And then I realized that what, I was, what I've been building on the whole time is trying to put together all the parts of me. So mm -hmm. I decided that owning the name that I have, um, and, and so I, you know, unless the universe suddenly says, from here forth you shall be named something else, that's, you know, what yep. I'm doing, integrating all that. And I, I look at all the roles of the things I do and the ways that I am, and there's a few different ones, but relationship is definitely a common thread in all of them. Yep. So this is just starting to get to know yourself. There are a whole bunch of questions that you can ask yourself. Uh, the best way of looking at this is you're approaching yourself as you're starting to date yourself. And think about the last time you started dating someone. What was it? <laughs> I see Sharon's face. <laughs> Always the worst part of the thing. Yeah, it's, it's the worst part of the courtship, huh? Yeah. Oh, I don't want to think about dating again. God damn it, yeah. 20 years. Well, it it's, doesn't have to be romantic relationship dating. It can be any get to know you relationship. Yeah. Yeah, but the idea is, what do you want to know about someone else? Well, what about yourself? The same things. And uh, what I'm about to list off is a bunch of stuff from Way of the Oracle, uh, which is pretty similar to some, some stuff from transportation. I just happen to have Way of the Oracle listed here. Uh, as we start talking about doing this for trans work, so what, what is your experience with trance states? Uh, these, these are just questions to ask yourself. About relaxation and breath control. Visualization. Lucid dreaming. Self-hypnosis. Solo journey work. 
leading path workings, uh, shamanic healings. Let me correct that spelling. <laughs> Uh, divination, uh, interpreting omens, drawing down, aspecting, or possession work, uh, mythology, and which mythologies? Because they're, they're not all the same. Now, of course, in the Indo-European, they're very similar, but they really are not all the same. Uh, shamanism. Uh, Jungian psychology. Uh, you may not know anything about any of these. You may know a lot about some of them. Probably a good idea to learn some about all of them. Uh, probably the most interesting one and the hardest one is the Jungian uh, psychology stuff. But it's really interesting stuff if you ever actually get into reading it. Because that is all, yeah, it's basically the start of your dream interpretation stuff. Uh, and visualization interpretations. Was, uh, he was very much about the images. And so he six years. Uh, have you ever had a voluntary or involuntary psychic experience? I'm sorry, what was that? Have you ever had a voluntary or involuntary psychic experience? Uh, do you have powerful anim animal totems or spirit guides? Do you have a strong affinity to a specific god or goddess? What's your current health state? Have you been to counseling? How do you react to alcohol, drugs, etc.? <laughs> some react very quickly, some take a lot. Uh, Gretchen back there is laughing because we all know her tolerance. <laughs> One teaspoon. <laughs> Quarter Benadryl. <laughs> yeah, she she actually did see that Benadryl. I did see that too. And I nodded. Yeah. Uh, have you ever had a life-threatening accident or illness? Uh, do you belong to a group? Does a group do trance work, meditative work? Well, yes, you all belong to a big group, <laughs> but does your local group do this stuff? Uh, what are your personal goals? In other words, where do you want to be? Where do you want to work towards? And along with that, where have you been? Uh, be honest with, with yourself, and, which is the diff most difficult thing to do. Uh, what life traumas and crises have you gone through? These may be relationship, life in general, health, emotional. How, do you, how did you handle them? And where do they stand today? That goes back to my story of where things I should not do. This is getting towards what are, what's in that list of things that may be harmful to you. So that's a pretty long list of things, but that's just the start of the questions to ask yourself. Uh, and this comes from page 134 of Way of the Shaman. Oh, sorry, not Way of the Shaman, of Way of the Oracle. Uh, I, I believe there is a very similar set of checklists in here, along with a lot of work uh, exercises. Uh, this is the first base book for everything Diana Paxson's written about trance, where the Oracle goes off to the oracular side of things and save. Uh, obsession, dispossession, builds upon this, but goes off to forming relationships with gods. Uh, which, again, a lot of stuff in the, that book also keep you brought back into asking about yourself. Because it is all about forming relationships. <clears throat> okay, so let's do another tr uh, small trance exercise to get to know ourselves a little bit. And then we'll finish up with a checksum again to make sure we're all back in one piece. So don't forget that checksum. 
Close your eyes. <clears throat> Take a deep breath in and out. And in and out. And once more in and out. And see yourself sitting here in this room. And as you see yourself sitting here, Feel yourself sinking into the floor, into a bright white room below us. Now, as you look at this room, you can see that we're not really below us. We're actually inside ourselves. And you see this tunnel, this path going off. And just start wandering down the path. And as you go through, you can see yourself walking through the body towards the frame. And as you go, you come upon a door. And you try the knob, and the door opens. And this opens up into another room. And in the center of the room, there is a pedestal. And on this pedestal is a book. And inside this book is all you ever need to know about yourself. All you have gone through. All that makes you, you. Take some time. Flip to the page and see what it says. Flip through a couple pages. And take a look at what is making you yourself.
Okay. Just for now, close your book. Know that you can always come back here. It is within inside yourself. And walk back out, close the door behind, back down the tunnel, back into the initial room. And bring yourself back to yourself. And now, when you're back in yourself, we're going to look at ourselves once more. And we're going to look at our head. And how does it look compared to before? Look at our chest. Has anything changed? Go down one arm and down the other arm and see if there's anything different. Then down into your belly and down each of your legs. And how do they compare to what they were before? Step out of your body once more and take a look at yourself. And as a whole, have you changed? Or are you the same? Bring yourself back into yourself. And take a deep breath in and out. In and out. And next breath, bring yourself back out and open your eyes and join me. So right there, that's uh, one really simple exercise where you can actually go in and look at yourself. It's a relatively safe exercise, too. Uh, so you can do this on your own. Uh, of course, I first came across this exercise in a workshop on slaying trolls, where the, the book, trolls being uh, things that are harmful to you that you sh that are harming your life, uh, and you're supposed to go into the book, find the troll, <coughs> get get his name, and then we came out, we write down a piece of paper on cardboard or paper troll, color it, put the name on it, and all that, and then burn it. <coughs> it was an interesting little uh, exercise, uh, and that ex that workshop has had a lot of influence on my life, but not because of that. Uh, so you can find all the bad stuff in there, but you can also find all the good stuff. And hopefully you guys found something, uh, reminded yourself of something that was, happened long in the past, or you know, maybe worked out something that is currently going on. Uh, but you can always go back there. You can always uh, see more about yourself there. Then we just add it in that checksum at the end. And I really cannot suggest more strongly that you should be doing this checksum exercise on a regular basis. Did any of you find, after we did the checksum the second time, did any of you find any differences other than normal age time lapse stuff? Good. <laughs> you changed. So, are there any questions? So, I do seem to do well journeying visualization. That that seems to work. But when it comes to doing the checksum, um, I'm not as visual as you. You'd be surprised at how little visual I actually am. Okay. <laughs> because the, the very first way you presented it was you were using the word love life. What do you look Right. Because like? most people are looking I'm more for more of a sensor. Yeah. And I'm not quite sure how to do it. Uh, same, it's basically the same way, but you're just using other senses. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I've worked myself to the point where I can actually 
do more visualization. And I've done this exercise so many times. You know, first off, I can do it like that, know about where I am, uh, if anything's changed. Uh, that just comes to practice. But I can also go slowly, and because I've done it so often, and I can actually visually see myself now. But it took me a while to work this way up into that. That is a very interesting uh, thing to do. Uh, really, you never can get a good perspective of what others see you as, because you know yourself too well. <laughs> but, yeah, exactly. It's not a bad idea if you're comfortable with taking criticism, because you will get that, no matter who you are. Uh, asking others how they see you. That is a great way of growing. And then it's up to you to choose, okay, do I accept this or do I work on this? That is a very valuable thing to do. Yeah, it's not always criticism either. No. Sometimes. It would be a lot of self-criticism. To an extent. And, and sometimes what I have found personally is that people will make assumptions based on my actions as to what my motivations are. And totally miss the mark. Yep. Or they they make certain assumptions because they see this one slice of me and they assume I'm always like that. Um, a good friend that I work with and I recently had a, one of those conversations where we just spontaneously opened up and came to the conclusion that people view both of us in the office as being nice and always being nice. But he and I both know that that nice has a limit and we're very similar in that so on the other side of that nice is really pretty scary. People don't see it, but we are consciously and constantly aware that it's there. Yep. So we're always holding it in check. We're always making sure that we don't get to the end of that fuse because we know how bad it is on the other side. And and people don't necessarily understand that. So they just think we're nice. They don't realize that what we're actually doing is trying to prevent you to see our evil side. I mean, we're trying to hide that because we don't want to share that with everyone. I would not like to see you finally pissed off <laughs> because you're going to snap one day and that person is going to suffer. But you also know me far better yes. than the average person does. So. Yeah. With yeah. regard to seeing yourself in other people's views, there's two interesting things that came up with what you said. One was um, this concept that I keep on uh, trying to post about it ever since. You know, our actions, you know, especially ones we don't, you know, that we we would consider be negative. Go and say left because of circumstance. When we see other people, we say that's how that person is. That's why they did that thing. That's a psychological bias that they're, that they're kind of documented. The other thing that came to mind was something called the Joe Hardy window, and it's this process. And basically, you have a list of characteristics. You select like somewhere like up to ten that represent you, and then you have other people select up to ten that represent you in their eyes. Huh. Categorized by 
known to yourself and others, known to you but not known to others, known to others not known to you. And then there's the last character, which is, you know, completely not you. Know, I don't know what they call it, but it's a Satan shadow. Irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we have duality and awareness that um, comes from partly being a writer. I, I think that some people are just hardwired to think this way. And there's a movie called Jake's Women um, with Alan Alda. If you ever get the chance to see the movie, I, I recommend it, especially if you know anybody who's a writer. It'll give you a lot of insight. But at any given time, there's a part of me that's present in the moment, like right now, speaking to everybody and saying what I'm saying. There's another part of me that's acting as this narrator, that's kind of overseeing everything and observing from a distance and, and trying to understand the entire story and see where it's going. And it can be a distraction at times, but at other times it can be very useful. So that's why like seeing other people's perspective is something that I'm constantly doing a little bit of because that's how I'm wired, but it's not common. So I you know, it, it tends to pop up, but it's something, you know, which is a perspective. Yeah. There's a there's a kind of therapy called internal family systems. Any of you have to go to therapy? Um. <laughs> And the concept is that, you know, you have your true self and then there's all these little people almost and that like there's a part of you that's the inner critic and a part of you that's like the lost child and a part of you. And so the concept is to kind of try to think about like, not like I am angry right now, but there's a part of me that's angry right now and learning to, the other half of that is learning like where those, why those things come to be through usually childhood trauma and they try to cover that. So maybe I had to learn about that for a friend uh, going through like reintegration there because he's got some fragments that are stuck mm -hmm. in the past. And yeah. He's come, come people can act like right. really s uncharacteristically when like one of those little events gets triggered. Mm -hmm. yeah, we saw we saw some some interesting stuff happen with, with what, you know when they were triggering some of these these hidden parts of him. Yeah. It's like a whole person came out, like a whole different personality came out. Yeah. Interesting. Yes, and uh, I know many people have said in the past that if you don't have a therapist, that's wrong. Everyone should have a therapist. <laughs> uh, I do. Look there. <laughs> <laughs> so, preferably licensed. And <laughs> no, I, I, I'm not the therapist. I'm the referee. <laughs> <laughs> well, MJ's not here, so you're the therapist. Oh. <laughs> uh, but there is nothing wrong with seeing a therapist. And it's definitely uh, counseling of some sort. Is just having someone to talk to, someone that's not going to judge you. Yeah, objective, talk to you. an, an yeah. Ob objective uh, observer. Yep. We go to doctors for our physical health. Go to yep. doctors for your emotional health. Mm -hmm. yep. Again, this is all about getting to know yourself, and you can't find out a lot about yourself while going to therapy. I, I saw a therapist and I was talking about my favorite subject, my mother-in-law, and, and she goes, no, it's not just you, she is a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, well it's it's a, a, an objective uh, thing. But it's important to find a good one. Yes. Mm -hmm. If they start throwing for it at you, run away. <laughs> if they run tell you your mother? religion is foolish superstition, run away. Yeah. <laughs> I did have that one, so. If they think, yeah, you need to be su submitted because you hear voices. No, sometimes you actually do hear voices. Uh, but that goes into the whole possession end of things, and we're not going there. <laughs> <laughs> but at least we're not going to try to go there today. So anything else? Any questions, comments? OK. Got a few minutes, and uh, I'm ending a little bit early, but we've got a few minutes, uh, and then skip something like we'll leave. All right, thank you. Yay.